In Taiwan, media reports say former President Chen Shui-bian has attempted to resolve his alleged involvement in money laundering through political bargaining. Reporters have not been able to contact his son and daughter-in-law, who are also implicated since they flew to the United States a few days before the scandal broke last week. Investigation into Chen Shui-bian's alleged involvement in money laundering has extended to Singapore. A Taiwanese prosecutor is there tonight to look into reports that 31 million U.S. dollars was sent to Swiss bank accounts of Chen's daughter-in-law via Singapore last year and eventually transferred to the Cayman Islands. Here in Hong Kong, the owner of a trading company tried to clear his name of any involvement in the case. He's demanded a police investigation into his finances to prove he has not had any dealings with Chen Shui-bian or his wife. Reports in Taiwan say a week before the scandal broke, Chen Shui-bian contacted the head of the legislature, Wang Jinping, to ask for political bargaining with the ruling Kuomintang. He threatened to divulge scandals implicating the Kuomintang otherwise. Wang Jinping denied the reports today, but added that Chen Shui-bian has many channels through which he can communicate with the Kuomintang. Newspapers in Taiwan also allege that Chen Shui-bian's daughter, Chen Xinyu, who has been hounded by the press since her father's fall from grace, is suffering from a mental breakdown and is now seeking medical help. Meanwhile, the whereabouts of her younger brother, Chen Chi chung and his wife, Huang Zhui-ching, remain a mystery. A university in Virginia confirmed that Chen Chi chung has contacted the college to ask for his admission to be deferred until next year. The college refused to do so. Chen Shui-bian's money laundering scandal has hit hard on morale at the Democratic Progressive Party. Reports say a DPP plan to rally a quarter of a million people to join a demonstration against President Ma ying at the end of the month has so far attracted little enthusiasm. The party's central committee will decide whether to go ahead with the plan. And still ahead in the news. Welcome back. Russia now says it will withdraw most of its troops from Georgia by Friday. That would be four days after Moscow pledged to begin its pullout. Russia's failure to honor its word has angered Western governments, but they have been unable to agree on a tough response. Jeremy Austin has more. Blindfolded and bound, around 20 Georgian police and soldiers were taken away from the port of Poti yesterday on Russian armored personnel carriers. Their destination was not known. Images like these are only serving to intensify Western anger over Russia's failure to honor its commitment to withdraw from Georgia. The pullout was supposed to start on Monday, but so far only a small number of Russian vehicles have been seen heading home. Russian troops continue today to man checkpoints on key roads in the tiny republic. President Dmitry Medvedev now says most Russian forces will be withdrawn by Friday, with some remaining in a buffer zone around the breakaway region of South Ossetia. In response to the crisis, NATO foreign ministers agreed yesterday to suspend formal contacts with Russia. There can be no business as usual with Russia under present circumstances. Calls for a tougher response by the U.S. were not supported by European members of NATO who are heavily dependent on Russia for energy supplies. But this crisis may be far from over. The upper house of Russia's parliament will next week debate recognizing the independence of the breakaway Georgian regions of Abkhazia and South Ossetia. That would lay down a fresh challenge to Western powers, which say Georgia's territorial integrity must be upheld. Jeremy Austin, TVB News. A 19th century palace in Cairo, Egypt, has been severely damaged after a fire tore through it. The building houses the upper chamber of parliament. More than a dozen people, including firefighters, have been hospitalized for smoke inhalation and other minor injuries. Thick clothed, uh, clouds, that is, of smoke filled the sky above the three-story building in the Egyptian capital. Authorities closed off roads in the area to make way for emergency vehicles. Army helicopters also sent in to help fight the fire. Witnesses say flames started on the top floor, then spread to the rest of the wooden building. The blaze has destroyed the archive room, the library, and several meeting chambers. No official word yet on the cause of the fire, but Evacuated employees say authorities told them they had ruled out terrorism. The fire was probably sparked by an electrical short circuit. 
Back locally, certain products used by blood transfusion services in Hong Kong have been recalled by the Swiss supplier. 40 freezing facilities are to blame. There is yet no evidence that the quality of the testing reagents was affected, so the global recall is precautionary. After being notified, the Hong Kong Red Cross Blood Transfusion Service stopped using the affected reagents and conducted an internal investigation. They found no evidence that the safety of the products used in the territory had been compromised. The Kowloon West constituency in the upcoming Legislative Council election will be a battleground for candidates who have served the district for years and newcomers. Many private housing complexes have sprung up in the district in recent years while impoverished housing remain. So the gap between the rich and poor is an issue the candidates have to address. Frederick Fong of the Association for Democracy